All right, we are live. We can give it a minute. Let some people jump on here. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Other than my headphones didn't work, so I'm sorry about that in the beginning. The headphones, I feel like, are a little bit easier uh, for this because then you don't pick up as much background noise and there's construction going on in the building next to us. Um, so they're changing the um, the armory. They took out the floors. They're redoing those completely. They took out all kinds of things over there. So. <laughs> wow. Why are they changing so many things? It's it's a good time to do it because no one's renting it right now. Right. <laughs> so they, um, it was just really outdated. And I think it was also very um, not uh, cost effective for heating and cooling. Right. Okay. So they're, they're updating things like that. So can you move the dragon? It's like sticking. Is it the dragon? It's just sticking behind my head. So it looks like I have a funny thing coming out of my head. <laughs> I just move this way. Where do you want to? Oh, see, I've got to be in the middle. <laughs> I'm oh. going to make sure that I send this to our friends who I know will want to jump on here. Hello, everybody who's on. Yes. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Oh, we're getting, yeah, they're, they're, the numbers, they climb quickly. We just give a minute or two because I know that, that there's that notification and then it's like, oh, we got to go find a place to watch it. <laughs> and I did have some great customers stop by this weekend and I recommended your book. And I made sure I put a, a great um, sticker on there uh, to remind them to join us to watch. Wonderful. <laughs> All right, now I'm hearing myself. There we go. All right. Yeah, it was a weird echo. Oh, Addison's here. Hi, Addison. So great. All right. So I am going to let us hop on here. I'm going to change this. I can. Here we go. Yay, here we are. Hey guys, this is Liz from Capricos Books, the, the disembodied voice, <laughs> as I'll cover myself up in a second. Um, and I am joined with the wonderful Miss Edie Baker. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm learning this new program that we're using, so I've got all kinds of fun labels and backgrounds and everything. But the first thing that I want to share, and hopefully, oh, good, good, here she is. Our friend Abigail from last week. Hi, Abigail. Abigail wanted to share this with you. And I'm going to um, put it up. There we go. So our That's artist nice. here, Abby Kate, she drew um, the neck or knock, depending on how you pronounce it, the water spirit. And Elsa is on the left with a baby water horse. <laughs> and then She-Ra and Swiftwind, the horse, are on the right. It looks like a little baby horse, too. <laughs> but great job. Thank you for sharing, Very nice. Abby. Yeah, thanks. And... Um, yeah, so today we will be, you are reading, you told me last week you're going to be reading the Salamander Spell, so I got it all set up. Uh, the other thing that I will say is, uh, I haven't told you this yet, but I got a huge shipment of your books in, <laughs> so I'll have to come by to get them signed, because I ordered lots of copies. I did not get any of the Salamander Spell, they were out, um, but I, I've got lots of, I believe I loaded up on the Magical Animal Rescue, because we had so many great, uh, so, so much great feedback from that. So if anybody is looking to get any of those, they are on our website and I'll be updating with the new ones that I got as well. Um, I do also have book plates. Uh, so if you already own a copy of Miss Baker's book and you would like them signed, I do have book plates I can send you. So just message me your address and hello from Ellie. Hi. <laughs> so I will let you get started. I'm going to cover my face here. So it is all on you. There you go. All right, well, I'm going to read from the Salamander Spell, which, as I mentioned last time, is the prequel to The Frog Princess. I wrote this after The Frog Princess, but it actually takes place before The Frog Princess. Chapter One. Like everyone else, Gracina knew exactly how important the Green Witch was to Greater Greensword. Not only did the Green Witch have to defend the kingdom from invaders, whether magical or mundane, she also had to ensure that everything was in good working order, like the roads, the moat, and the castle itself. It was a full-time job, 
made doubly hard when she had royal duties as well. Christina's mother, Queen Olivine, had been the Green Witch since before her daughters were born. Although the Queen wasn't very old, everyone knew that someday someone would have to replace her. Since the title usually passed from mother to daughter, the whole kingdom had been watching Grisina's older sister, Chartreuse, for some sign that she had inherited her mother's talent for magic. Unfortunately, that sign had yet to show itself, and everyone was getting tired of waiting, especially 13-year-old Grisina. Grisina set her hand on one of the thistles that grew at the edge of the moat and jerked it back, scowling. It wasn't fair. Chartreuse always got whatever she wanted, a horde of suitors, lessons in magic, a new kitten. Grisina, on the other hand, had to make do with her leftovers just because she was a younger sister. Even her instructor in deportment, Lady Sophronia, had taught Chartreuse first, something the old woman mentioned daily. Whereas Chartreuse had been a prized pupil, Grisina was sadly lacking. Her curtsies were either too deep or not deep enough. Chartreuse's had been exactly right. Grisina's small talk wasn't witty. Chartreuse knew how to captivate everyone in the room. Grisina had yet to master the air of command that Lady Sophronia insisted all princesses must have. Everyone from scullery maids to the greatest nobleman paid attention to, to Chartreuse. Grisina's ineptness with her lessons didn't bother her at all. Although she loved to learn, she didn't think anything Sophronia had to say was important enough to worry about. Chartreuse, of course, had considered her own deportment lessons vital. Grisina was sure that even if Chartreuse hadn't mastered the art of courtly behavior, she would have been the court favorite. While Grisina hated her carrot red hair and too many freckles, Chartreuse was always tossing her honey gold curls and admiring her creamy complexion in the mirror. No matter what Chartreuse did, she was always pretty. She even looked good when she cried because it made her blue eyes dewy so that she seemed sweet and vulnerable. All crying did to Grisina was turn her face red and splotchy. Wiping a drop of blood from her pricked finger, she sat back on her heels, waiting impatiently for her sister to finish her lesson. Grisina had been kneeling beside the moat for so long that her legs were getting numb. That morning, she'd overheard her mother telling Chartreuse where they would meet for their daily magic lesson, giving Grisina just enough time to look for a hiding place. The pile of stone blocks left over from repairing the tower was only a few yards from the edge of the moat, close enough to listen in on the conversation. It hid her if she stayed put, but it wasn't big enough to conceal her if she moved more than a foot in either direction. Grisina shifted her weight ever so carefully, trying not to make a sound. Leaving before the lesson ended was out of the question, since she wasn't supposed to be there in the first place, and her mother was bound to see her if she stood up. A medium-sized fish chased a school of minnows just below the surf smooth surface of the moat. Queen Olivine sighed and shook her head, turning to her older daughter. You need to sound more confident when you recite a spell, Chartreuse. Listen closely. I'll do it again so you can hear what I mean. It's very simple, really. Just trace the letters in the water with your finger and say, Bubbles small and bubbles large, put yourselves within my charge. On the water, write my name, round it set a lovely frame. Bubbles formed, gathering on the surface of the water until the name Olivine became legible and a circle of bubbles surrounded the word. The queen's name floated in place until a curious gray-green fish rose to the surface and tried to bite one of the larger bubbles. The bubble burst with a loud pop, scaring the fish away. Grisina giggled and clapped her hand over her mouth to stifle the sound. Chartreuse turned around and glanced in her direction, wearing a haughty look of disdain, which might have been more intimidating if Grisina hadn't caught her practicing that very same expression in a mirror that morning. Knowing that there was no use hiding any longer, Grisina sighed and stood up. Queen Olivine frowned at her younger daughter. Did you skip your lesson in deportment again? I'm sure Lady Sophronia is looking everywhere for you. I finished my lesson, said Grisina, her legs prickling as she shifted from one foot to the other. You're always poking your nose into things that don't concern you, said Chartreuse. It isn't as if you're going to get any magic. For 200 years, the firstborn daughter in our family has been the Green Witch. As the eldest, I can't help it. I'm curious, said Grisina. I love watching you do magic, mother. It's your sister's turn now, said Olivine, and she turned back to Chartreuse. I want you to try it again, but this time you have to show me that you believe in what you're doing. That's just it, said Chartreuse. How can I believe it will work when it never has before? It will in due time, said Olivine. My grandmother didn't come into her magic until she was 17. So you've told me, muttered Chartreuse, her lips pursing into a pout. Tipping her finger in the water, Chartreuse wrote her name while repeating the spell in a more commanding tone. When nothing happened, she sighed and turned to her mother. Tell me again what father said about your magic when you first met. A slow smile lit Olivine's face. He told me that even without my magic, I was the most fascinated woman he'd ever met 
but with my magic, I was irresistible. I don't know how many times he said that he was honored that my parents had chosen him. Chartreuse sighed. That's so sweet. When I get married, it will be to a man who feels that way about me. He's going to love me to distraction and put me above everything else. He'll bring me gifts and take me to tournaments and write poems about my beauty, just like Father did for you. That was a long time ago, and we were both young, said Olivine. Most husbands aren't so attentive. Mine will be, said Chartreuse. I'm going to marry for love. Maybe Torrance or Limelin. They're both very handsome. For the last few months, one prince after another had come to visit from various kingdoms, hoping to win Chartreuse's hand in marriage. She had enjoyed all the attention and had been delighted when some of her more serious suitors decided to remain at the castle until she made up her mind. A handsome face isn't all you should be looking for, said Olivine. I know that. They have other good qualities, too. Torrance writes songs about me. He has the most wonderful singing voice in his eyes. Have you noticed what a lovely shade of blue they are? Some of my friends fancy themselves in love with him. I think I might be, too. He says he'll have another song for me tonight. Prince Torrance comes from a good kingdom, said Queen Olivine, but he wouldn't be your best choice. He's a second son, and his elder brother is reputed to be exceedingly healthy. There's also Limelin, said Churchus. He's terribly brave and has the nicest smile. I feel tingling when he kisses my hand. Christina stood up and stretched. Have you noticed that she doesn't care if either of them has a brain or is honest or true? The man I marry must have a good heart and love, you for, love me for myself. He must be smart and caring, and no one asked for your opinion, Pipsqueak, said Chartreuse. Sure Queen Olivin didn't look happy. <clears throat> Limelin is also a second son. His kingdom is small and poor. He wouldn't bring enough to the marriage to make it worth your while. Chartreuse sure extended her hand over the water. I'm going to try that spell again. Maybe if I concentrate harder. Careful, said Grisina. You'll give yourself a headache. Chartreuse sure smiled sweetly at her sister. Be nice, Christina, and maybe I'll let you marry one of the other princes, not Stephen or Clarence. They're both too serious, and I've never seen either one smile. Miguel, perhaps. You like animals and such, so you won't mind that he doesn't talk about anything except horses and dogs. I think he's a tremendous bore. I'm sure you'd find him fascinating. You're too kind, Christina said. Or perhaps you prefer Ronaldo. He acts more like a merchant than a prince, but some people might think that's endearing. Princesses should never lie, Grisina, so be honest. Don't you think one of them would be ideal for you? Olivine looked annoyed. Don't be so quick to dismiss them, Chartreuse. Miguel and Rinaldo may not share your interests, but they are both the sole heirs to sizable kingdoms. Either one would be a good choice. Not for me, mother, said Chartreuse. All either one cares about is his own kingdom. I want a husband who will care about greater greensword. Now be quiet, Grisina, so I can try this spell again. Grisina held her breath as her sister recited the simple poem. Chartreuse had tried one spell after another over the last few years, but so far not one of them had worked. Part of Grisina wanted her sister to succeed. After all, the kingdom needed a green witch in every generation, taking over when her predecessor was no longer strong enough to protect the people of Greater Greensword. Another part of her, however, was so jealous that she got a sour taste in her mouth every time she thought about Grisina being able to work magic. It would mean that one of her greatest fears was about to be realized. She, Grisina, would be the untalented nobody in a family of special people. After reciting the spell, Chartreuse waited expectantly as a few errant bubbles drifted across the water. She'd worn her hair loose that morning, so when she leaned for a, close for a better look, a curl fell forward to trail across the water's surface. Chartreuse wasn't aware of it until a large fish, mistaking her hair for a floating insect, snapped at the curl and yanked. Ow! She squeaked as she lost her balance. She fell in the water far enough to drench her face and hair, and might have tumbled in all the way if her mother hadn't grabbed the back of her tunic. When she sat up spluttering, Chartreuse had bits of water weed plastered to her face. Grosina laughed. Now that took talent. I'm sure your suitors will be impressed when they hear what you can do. Don't you dare tell them, cried Chartreuse, lunging at her sister. Their mother stepped between the girls. That's quite enough, Olivine said. Chartreuse, princesses do not strike their sister, so stop trying. But she's so aggravating, mother, complained Chartreuse. And as for you, Grisina, Olivine continued, I expect that you will show discretion and refrain from telling anyone about your sister's lessons. Christina started backing away. I won't say a word as long as no one asks me how Christina or how Chartreuse's magic is going. But you know that princesses must always tell the truth. Hiking up her skirts, Christina turned and ran. You'd better watch out, shouted Chartreuse. When I'm the Green Witch, I'll teach you not to be such a brat. You'll have to get your magic first, puffed Christina. She disappeared around the side of the castle. And, not, uh, and I'm not holding my breath until you do. That was chapter one of the Salamander Spell. If you read... <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you so much. If you read The Frog Princess, Christina is her aunt and Chartreuse is her mother. 
So. Ah, interesting. I was just um, thinking about how you have, uh, I was just thinking about the names and how you are really great at coming up with these wonderful names. And uh, I liked that they are, um, I, I noticed that they were color-based, the chartreuse and the olive uh, names. I liked that. Um, and speaking of that, one of the reasons that I was thinking about names is because here, I'm gonna hop over here, there we go. Um, one of the comments we have here is from Graham Galloway. Hi, from Graham. Miss Baker is the reason I'm a book lover now. I read The Frog Princess at least a dozen times as a kid, read. <laughs> the Frog Princess at least a dozen times as a kid. Sending love from New York City. And Graham is one of my favorite names, so I was just thinking about that too. <laughs> Hi, Graham. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yay. And um, I'm going to put on here, actually, I will ask if you have any questions, by the way, I meant to say this earlier. If you have any questions or comments, if you leave them in the comment section, we can see them and we will share them. And that's what Miss Baker is uh, famous for doing. She loves questions. <laughs> she loves to encourage young writers. I think she's great at it. So um, my question for you, Miss Baker, to get started is, um, what is one of the most surprising things you learned in creating books? <laughs> I try to come um, up with what are you even creating, making the stories? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I like aha moments. Uh -huh. And any author will tell you they do. An aha moment is when um, very different things come together and they, they fit and they work just right. And you say, aha, that's perfect for that. So. Yes. Um, That's wonderful. Um, Addison says, I love this story. I know I mentioned it last week, but this is the first book she read from you. So she got started right at the, 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 the beginning. Oh, of, that was the first one? Yes. That's okay, what she said. Um, anyone, if you have any comments again, I'm going to put Abby's art up in a second again, just to show, re show it for anybody who might have missed it. But I also want to say I loved your, your sweater today. Extra. Uh, I don't want to say festive, but extra flowery. Oh, this morning you. we made pom poms, and it's making me think we did. Oh, we do craft time in the mornings, and we did pom poms, and that's. And we were talking about flowers and having the petals like that, and your, your sweater makes me think <laughs> of that. So I'm gonna put Abby's art just one more time up for anyone who missed it. This is some artwork that we've received. So if you ever want to send us some art, you can email it or message it, us on Facebook, and we will be happy to share it. Very nice. But we, uh, Abby turned eight yesterday. So happy birthday, Abby. Can you get a copy of the Frog Princess? Mm -hmm. And um, here is, Abby says, thanks for the autographed book. Yes, she got, yesterday she got one of your books. I was okay. telling you earlier. Hi, she got more than a princess, special delivered. <laughs> and we have Heather here, Heather Yates. We have enjoyed the Frog Princess stories as well as the Wide Awake Princess. We read the Wide Awake Princess series at the dinner table after meals. Oh, that's Wonderful. such a wonderful connection. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. I like that. Just reading a little bit together. So I just wanted to show you again. This was the copy of the original, the cover of the original Salamander Spell. So you might have a copy of this or it might be this one. But it's the same story, just a different it's cover. And I love story. that they, I kind of like that they changed the covers. Both covers are really, I like the, the illustration is really cute, but I also like the, um, the picture. Um, Cause I know that they both have, they both match in series and I definitely appreciate that. So you have your salamander and the other one has the frog on the front, um, the picture of the actual frog. <laughs> um, Addison would like to know, are you going to do any more stories about Millie's baby? Um, have you read the the Wide Awake Princess? All of them. The last three books um, are overlapping um, with the Frog Princess, and I didn't have. You're right. I didn't have Millie's baby born yet. She was expecting the baby. Um, I'm debating. I might do um, a short story and just put it on the internet to finish that off because I have a lot of people asking about that. <laughs> So, yeah, um, it, it's percolating in my brain. <laughs> it's a point that apparently a lot, it's, it's a loose end that a lot of fans really yeah. want to feel tied up in. <laughs> yeah. um, 
the uh for and i was going to mention to heather um she mentioned reading the frog princess the wide awake princess series um i also just wanted to mention the more than a princess series now that you have you can kind of see the one at the bottom here but you had excuse me more than a princess come out I guess it's been two years. <laughs> and then um, Power of Princess book two. I think I still have a few pins left from our pre-orders. So if anyone uh, wants to order those, I have plenty of Power of a Princess, but I had actually, um, Abby actually got my very last copy of More Than a Princess. So I think that's what's in the box that I got. <laughs> so um, at, um, Addison, now I'm having problems with all the A names. I'm sorry. Addison also said she would love to hear more about that. So she definitely wants to know okay. what's happening there. Okay. So one last call for questions. I don't want to keep anyone too long, but I want to put a um, make sure that we answer your questions if you have any. And I will find see if I can find another good question to ask. I feel like I've asked you all my good <laughs> go-to questions. Oh, somebody asked last week. You asked me last week what um, book I'm reading, currently reading. Oh, yes. And I never really <laughs> answered the question. <laughs> um, I have been reading a lot of, um, my daughter got me started on Nora Roberts' romance books, and I've been reading a lot of those. But currently, I'm taking a little break from Nora Roberts, and I'm reading a historic um, fiction story. It takes place during the War of the Roses. So oh. I'm, I'm a big fan of um, British history, which is kind of evident, I guess, in a lot of my castles and things, but. No, that was a good, um, I, I didn't know if you actually wanted to answer the question last week. So I didn't actually, I didn't, I was just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to push you if you didn't want to answer, but I do, I love to ask that question because it's always interesting to me to hear what authors are reading um, because it's a lot of times it's something that I wouldn't, because there's nothing in their genre. <laughs> Yeah. So it's like, yeah. okay, well, of course, I mean, I don't know why I expect them to read what they write, but that's not always the case. Well, when I finished this, um, my daughter ordered some books for me that my agent had recommended that are along the same lines as a book that I'm considering doing. Okay. So, Research. Yes. <laughs> Just the um, age level and everything for what I want to do. So That's awesome. Um, uh Addison says, also, my friend loves books about magic, and I was able to recommend your books. Wonderful. Yay. We love to hear that. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so I won't keep you any longer, and we will uh, wrap things up for today. And remember, if you guys have any artwork, we love, love, love to see that. Um, we love to share that. Mm -hmm. And your questions, we love to answer your questions. Make sure that you share this with your friends. What are we reading next week? Are we going to read The Frog Princess? This is the okay. newer cover of the Frog Princess. Yes. So I have a short, interesting story about the Frog Princess cover. Um, it was my age or my editor showed me the cover that they had first planned to do, and it was like some squashed frogs, sort of batik looking frogs. And I told him I didn't like it, it looked like roadkill. <laughs> so then they did the frog, um, the picture of the frog on the, the cushion with the little crown on the frog. And that's the one that they went with, which I really liked. But yes, so that's it. I generally don't have any say in the cover unless I don't like it. I say, you know, I don't like that. Or, well, actually sometimes, um, I don't have it right near me. In we can show it of, thank you. In the cover of the um, Power of a Princess, like the little people, um, yes. I, I've made comments about that. The little people are the knockers. I don't, I don't have one handy either. I just yeah. had one on my desk. Um, things like that. I make comments or of the, the length of a dress that they're wearing or something. I might make a comment about that. But okay. generally, the illustrator does her own work and the um, the editorial people tell her what to do. So. And uh, well, I'll have to have uh, next time I will do some pictures where it is both on the like um, I'll share pictures like I did with Abby's artwork where I, we have the covers side by side so you can okay. see them and we can talk about them. Okay. Um, so my um, friend, Miss Gallagher, she is a teacher. She says she's going to be by to pick this one up. I don't have Salamander in stock. That one I haven't gotten yet, but I do have some other books. I'll have to double check that I even have the frog prints. I'm pretty sure I do, but um, they are, some of them are listed on the website, but again, I just got a huge box, a huge delivery. That's why my store is a mess right now. <laughs> Boxes everywhere. Um, 
And Addison's excited. And Abby says, the good idea, crushed frogs would be gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. And that's, it's so, I love covers. I mean, cover, I'm just an artwork person. So it's always interesting to see. And usually covers, I feel like, um, excuse me. I don't talk to anybody all day. And then when I talk too much, I start yawning a lot when I go live. But um, usually I feel like the covers are very different and I have a preference, but I like both of your covers again, because there's at least a, a theme and they've changed all the covers in the series to match right. one way or the other. So, <laughs> well, well, I have an ahead. idea. Yeah. It would be very nice. If people want to do artwork, if they could give me, just send us an alternate cover to the frog princess. That's Something a great that idea. They, they think it should have been. We have this one and we have the picture of the frog on the cushion with a crown. So if you can think of something else for the frog princess, that would be fun. Yeah, I'd love send us your pictures. <laughs> excuse me. All right, everyone. We will wrap it up and we want to see your frog, <coughs> excuse me, frog princess covers. And uh, have a great day. We will see you next week at three o'clock. Yes. Bye. Bye.